Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, today we're diving into something uh, that I think we all think about as we get a little older, or maybe, um, you know, those of us thinking ahead. Mm. It's stroke prevention. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest, I was looking at these new guidelines and wow, it's incredible how much we can do these days to prevent a stroke. Yeah, it's really remarkable. Uh, you know, it's not just about genetics anymore. It's about us taking control. Okay, so let's break that down for our listeners a little bit. If you're listening to this and thinking, okay, so prevention, I know it's important, but where do I even start? Mm -hmm. What would you say is like the biggest takeaway from all this new research? You know, the most important thing for people to remember is that up to 80% of first time strokes are preventable. That's a big deal. And it comes down to two things, knowing what your risk factors are and then being proactive about managing them. Okay, so it's not just, oh, it runs my family, I'm doomed. Mm -hmm. There are things we can do. What are some of the biggest risk factors people should be aware of? What should we be keeping an eye on? A lot of it boils down to good cardiovascular health. So that means, you know, keeping your blood pressure in check, maintaining a healthy weight, watching those cholesterol levels, and managing blood sugar. Right, those usual suspects we hear about with heart health. You mentioned being proactive. I'm sure some people are hearing that thinking, uh, here comes the diet and exercise lecture again. But are there any surprises in the guidelines when it comes to lifestyle changes we can make to reduce our risk? You know, one thing that really stands out is the emphasis on the Mediterranean diet. You know, more and more research shows that eating this way, so, you know, lots of fruits and veggies, whole grains, healthy fats like you'd find in olive oil and nuts that can really move the needle on stroke prevention. Okay, so maybe swapping that afternoon cookie for some almonds, I can get behind that. What about medication? Where does that fit into all of this? Well, it's not always necessary for everyone, and the guidelines are very clear about that. It really depends on your individual situation. If you have existing heart conditions or your risk factors are through the roof, your doctor might recommend medication to keep your blood pressure or cholesterol in check. But for others, focusing on those healthy lifestyle changes we've been talking about, that might be enough. The key is to talk to your doctor, figure out what's right for you. So it's all about personalized prevention plans. I like that. You know, this is making me think about that Life's Essential 8 we keep hearing about. Is that connected to all of this? Oh, absolutely. Life's Essential 8 is all over these new stroke prevention guidelines. It really highlights that to prevent that first stroke, we've got to look at our cardiovascular health from all angles. So yeah, diet and exercise are key, but it also means prioritizing sleep, managing stress levels, and of course, if you smoke, quitting is huge. It's about taking care of your whole self. And that's something we can all get behind, right? No matter how old you are, or what your health journey looks like. Yeah, absolutely. It's never too late. Right. And it's not just about, you know, living longer. It's about uh, how you're living those years, mm -hmm. making them count. Quality of life. That's what it's all about. Being proactive, taking control. Now, I did want to circle back to something in the guidelines that I found really interesting, this emphasis on health equity. What's the connection to stroke prevention? Oh, that's so important. And they really highlighted it this time around. We've got to remember that stroke risk isn't just about like individual choices, things like uh, whether someone has access to good health care, if they can afford their medications, even things like, you know, what their neighborhood is like. Can they walk places? Do they have healthy food options? All of that factors in. So it's recognizing those bigger picture issues. Yeah. Right. Things that maybe we don't always think about when we think about health. Exactly. And it's a reminder to doctors, nurses, everyone in healthcare, really, to think about those things with every patient. Maybe it's connecting someone with resources, you know, if they're struggling to put food on the table, or maybe it's helping them navigate the healthcare system, which can be so confusing, or even just making sure they're getting treatments that they can afford that aren't going to break the bank. Right, because health is complicated. Yeah. Okay, another thing I wanted to ask you about, and this really stood out to me in the guidelines, were these specific recommendations for women? Mm -hmm. It feels like finally we're seeing more acknowledgement of how, you know, health issues can affect men and women differently. Absolutely. And it's about time. I mean, it makes a huge difference. So in these guidelines, we're seeing this focus on really looking at stroke prevention through a gender specific lens. Doctors need to be aware of certain things that can put women at higher risk. OK, so let's talk specifics. What are some of those conditions for women that we should be aware of? Well, for example, something like um, being on birth control pills, that's something to consider. Or if a woman had high blood pressure during pregnancy, especially a dangerous condition called preeclampsia that can increase her risk down the road. And even uh, conditions like 
endometriosis or, um, you know, going through menopause early, it's all connected. We have to think about how women's hormonal health, their reproductive health plays a role. So many factors. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to that conversation with your doctor, right? Being your own advocate, knowing your family's history and making sure you're getting the right screenings. hundred percent. Knowledge is power, right? Wow. The more you know about your own risk, the better equipped you are to make good decisions about your health. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. This has been so helpful. Even with all the research I did, hearing you talk about it, it really brings it all together. Mm. So as we start to wrap things up here, what would you say is like the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with today? You know, it really comes down to this. It's not about adding years to your life. It's about adding life to those years, yeah. right? And that's what's so powerful about these guidelines. It all ties together. Mm -hmm. Like if you're eating that Mediterranean diet we talked about, that can help you manage your weight. And then when you manage your weight, well, that helps lower your blood pressure. It creates this ripple effect on your overall health. Yeah, it's like they always say, Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Exactly. And the best part is even small changes can make a difference. You don't have to, like, revamp your whole life overnight. Yeah. Start small, right? Maybe add some walnuts to your breakfast or take a walk at lunch. Little things add up. You know, that's what stuck with me through all of this. So for everyone listening, here's a thought to chew on. If you could seriously reduce your chances of having something as life-changing as a stroke, just by making a few tweaks to your day-to-day, -day, why wouldn't you give it a shot? It's about taking charge of your health. And who knows, you might find a new favorite recipe along the way or rediscover how much you love to walk. It's about adding life to your years and maybe even years to your life. Couldn't have said it better myself. Take that first step right. You deserve a healthier, happier future. That's all the time we have for today's Deep Drive, everyone. We'll see you next time.